Each plane we review has something special about it. Some offer unmatched speed, others comfort. Some are designed to save lives or deliver crucial cargo, and others ensure the clear and peaceful skies above us. Well, the plane we review today has a bit of everything mentioned above, so let's take a closer look at this bird. Well, we all know how helicopters fly, right? The rotor spins the blades and generates lift. Well, if at some point you would tilt the rotor forward and possibly extend a pair of wings, this will become a tilt rotor aircraft, much like an Osprey. But what if you could tilt the whole wing? Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in this video, we share a unique story of the LTV XC-142. In 1959, the U.S. Army and Air Force concluded that the usage of helicopters for military transportation plays a significant role in the combat area, but lacks three major things – speed, altitude, and range. Well, yeah, I know, it sounds like they want to have a Hercules, but make it a VTOL. And yes, that's right, that's what they demanded. Oh, and just in case, let it be able to land on a carrier, cause the Navy was up to split the bill. So, in 1961, all three, the Army, Air Force, and Navy, reached a consensus, and the project was officially designated as the Tri-Service Assault Transport Program, under the guidance of the Navy's Bureau of Naval Weapons. At first, the main goal was to replace the old Sikorsky CH-37, but make it able to cover up to 300 miles while cruising at 250 knots, with a short-term maximum speed of 400 knots and all that maintaining 10,000 pounds useful load. Easier said than done, I know, but one particular design that could comply with these requirements landed on the Buez table. Vought, a conglomerate of aeronautical firms known for designing and manufacturing the F-8 Crusader, one of the first supersonic fighters of that time, responded with their design concept. Vought Corporation, backed by Ryan Aeronautical and Hiller Aircraft, who had more experience in rotorcraft design, presented a tilt-wing aircraft design. The design was brave, to say the least. Despite the initial skepticism from the Buey, they've got the green light. But what exactly caused it to agree to such an unusual concept? Well, Hiller Aircraft Company, a small manufacturer from California, is the key figure here. Five years before, Hiller already worked with the Army and designed a tilt-wing aircraft. The prototype successfully passed the tests and showed good range, speed, and payload. It was the Hiller X-18. But it was a rushed project. It's essentially a fuselage of the Chase YC-122 AV truck, with two Allison T-40 turboprops from Lockheed XVF-1, with contra-rotating props. An interesting part was the jet engine at the tail, which could be rotated upwards and downwards to control the pitch at a lower speed. Well, it looks to me that Vought just called Hiller and told, they need this thing again, but let's just stretch it, add a second pair of engines, and call it a day. Looks like Buey was okay with this straightforward plan, and in 1962 the contract for five prototypes was signed off. Initially, the project was called Vought Ryan Hiller XC-142, but when Vought was acquired by Ling Temco, Ryan and Hiller disappeared from the name and project became Ling Temco Vought XC-142. Alright, even if this bird is highly based on Hiller's X-18, let's take a closer look at the specs and fuselage. The fuselage of the 142 is not the same as that used for the X-18. Since one of the requirements was to be able to accommodate up to 32 fully equipped troops, this bird is quite chunky. By the way, depending on interior modification, it also should be able to transport 24 wounded personnel on stretchers, including four medics. Another variant was strictly cargo and should be able to transport 8,000 pounds of it. 142 is 58 feet long with a wingspan of 67.6. Fuselage useful width was 7.5 feet and the height was 7, giving it a rather boxy shape. Its empty weight was 22,500 pounds, while its max takeoff weight was 44,500 pounds. Interestingly, the max weight is different from vertical takeoff and short takeoff. During the vertical takeoff, its max takeoff weight was 41,000. 
Despite the shape and size, the bird was quite agile. Four massive T-64 turboprop engines from General Electric produced 3,000 horsepower each and were equipped with four-bladed Hamilton props. But wait, this all sounds just like any other cargo plane, right? Well, let's talk about the wing. That's where things get really interesting. For the vertical takeoff, XC-142 could tilt the wing up using two screw jack actuators driven by the hydraulic motor. An interesting fact is that it could tilt the wing up to 100 degrees, so it can hover in place even in tailwind conditions. But since the wind tilting took some time, it couldn't adjust for necessary corrective pitch changes, especially during landing. So there's this tiny, compared to the massive 15-foot Hamiltons, propeller that spins in the horizontal plane and is used for pitch change. While in VTOL mode, roll was controlled by differential clutching of the propellers, while yaw used the ailerons, which were in the airflow. Wait a second, a clutch? I'm not anywhere near an aviation engineer, but I don't remember a clutch in any of the planes I've ever researched. Well, buckle up, things are getting even more interesting. Turns out, these 3,000 horsepower engines were all interconnected with the gearing and shaft system. So, technically, if three engines died, all four, or sorry, five props, because the tail pitch prop was linked too, will be spun by the one engine that's still working. Isn't that crazy? Well, let's get back to the specs. I told the bird was pretty fast. In fact, one of the fastest in its class. Cruise speed was around 250 knots, while its record speed was 377 knots at 20,000 feet. Of course, four massive General Electric engines needs lots of fuel, so a 1,400-gallon tank allowed it to cover 400 miles on a mission, while the expected ferry range with additional fuel tanks could be up to 3,500 miles. Unfortunately, XC-140 never made it past the prototype testing stage. The Navy quit first, worried by the downwash of the massive props, they thought it would be too much risk to land this bird on a carrier and cut the funding. While testing the prototypes, it was clear. Sometimes complex engineering is just way too complex. The drive shaft was such an amazing engineering marvel that, unsurprisingly, it was the weakest part of the aircraft. Constant vibrations, overheating, clutch issues, and dozens of other problems were discovered while testing. And testing, I mean, it was extensive, 420 hours flown in 488 flights. Unfortunately, several incidents happened with each of the five prototypes built. Sadly, one of them took the lives of three test pilots. The only remaining XC-142 is on display at the Air Force Museum at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base near Dayton, Ohio. 142 is definitely a unique bird. Truly, this aircraft looks like it could be made for Cameron's avatar, not the US military, right? Sadly, such genius engineering didn't find its way past the prototype. But on the other hand, it made its contribution to the development of VTOL technologies, which are widely used by the military and maybe will be used for civil transportation very soon. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did while researching this bird. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. And until next time.